might be the, one of the last truly analog cars without yep. hybrid assist. Or yep. Let's see what it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, we're all go, we're going to jail now. <laughs> yeah, this is a very impressive machine. This is Thank you. Another episode, a very special episode of Jay Leno's Garage. The car we're featuring today, 2023 Corvette Z06. This is the one you've been hearing about since the C8 came out. This is the one everybody's been waiting for. As you can see, a little more brutal than the C8, a little bigger. We'll find out all the specifications in just a second here. Uh, this is a very exciting car to me because I think this is really the best American can do. You know, it doesn't get any better than this. Uh, you have a car here that competes with the very best of European cars at a third of the price, maybe 25% of the price. We don't have the exact price on this car yet, but it's less than $100,000. You have 670 horsepower in a normally aspirated engine, 5.5 liter, flat plane crank, uh, four valves per cylinder, the whole deal. I mean, anything you would expect, any of the European exotics is in here, and again, it's done at a price that is, uh, well, I don't, know how you, I don't know how you build it for that price. I restore cars and I can't restore them for under, for under grand. So I, I don't know how they do it, but it's American efficiency, it's American engineering. Uh, you know, this is what I love about GM now. It's all engineers. You know, in the old days, Jay, this is Bob. He came over from Maytag. Hey, Bob, how you doing? That's right. I was in the washer dryer division. Oh, well, now I'm going to be in. All that. No, those days are all gone. Everybody uh, from from the top, Mary Bear. Everybody, everybody is an engineer, and boy, they've just done an incredible job. Look at the size of the air intakes on this here. Uh, this is the coupe model, but the the roof does come off. Let me bring in uh, the gentleman who is the lead development engineer in the Z06. This is not a PR guy. This is the engineer. See, everybody's an engineer now. Aaron Link. Aaron, come on in. Good to see you, my friend. Great to be here, Jay. Well, yeah, this is, this is, you've got to be proud of this. Super this proud. Unbelievable. Definitely it? proudest yeah. moment in my 21 years at GM. And it's got everything it should have. It's got the dual clutch transmission. I mean, it's got everything you could want in, in an exotic car. And it truly is an exotic car because if something came from Italy or Germany or anywhere else with these specifications it would truly be exotic at three to four times the price. Exactly right. Yep. Okay. So let's take take us through it here. It's it, it appears to be a bit wider and than the uh, standard C8, correct? It is, 3.6 inches wider. Right. One of the features I point out to folks is on the C8 the headlight blends right into this surface. Right. So this extra width you can see right there and right. kind of that flat big shouldered width. And then in the rear, the door is the same as the C8. Right. But then this surface is all pulled out and then this piece of the spear is brought out too. So you get a lot more airflow into the rear coolers and then to house the 345 section tires. Biggest rear tires we've ever put on a Corvette. Yeah, the others are huge. Yeah, yeah. And for the first time, I believe in Corvette history, a bespoke engine. Right? Exactly right. built only for Corvette. I mean, up to this point, they shared, well, from the 265 to 283, 327, 350, it was the same engine in Camaro and everybody right. else. Right. This is an engine built only for this car. It is. Yeah, when this car was dreamt up many years ago, the idea was this architecture befits having this exotic LT6 engine, which we've never done before, right? A flat plane crankshaft, and it's kind of the, the nirvana of a mid-engine car to us, of a high revving V8 with uh, a mid-engine setup where you can take advantage of the traction, have a really light front end, you know, immediate steering response. Well, a high revving V8 used to be 6,400 RPM. <laughs> right. Now it's what, 86? 8,600 80, redline. 80. Wow. One fun fact is our average RPM on a road course or aggressive driving, let's say, usually ends up about 6,700 RPM. Wow. So we're even higher than the peak of most small box. Yeah, and this is an engine meant to run at high rev. You know, most American engines, just because of the nature of American driving and whatnot, were low, all the power is down low. Mm -hmm. But this loves to scream, doesn't it? It does. It wants yeah. to, it has to. The gearing is shorter to allow that. Right. And yeah, we find 
it's a different experience, right? But I think this lineup of Corvette allows this car to exist, and we have them both, right? We have the Stingray with the traditional right. stump pulling right. V8, and then this is the exotic screaming V8, and both are rewarding. I think the power number we released uh, two days ago, 670 horsepower, kind of shocked people. Well, I love the corporate commitment to it because it used to be in the old days, no, we can't do that for Corvette. You can't get that. You know, they've been talking since Duntoff's talk about mid engines mm -hmm. since the 50s. And mm -hmm. oh, no, no. And the fact that they're not happy with just beefing up the old V8, right. it's a brand new one off engine made only for this car. Exactly right. Yeah, this was not taking uh, a small block and fitting up the equipment right. to make it rev high. Right. This was completely ground up, you know, blank sheet of paper engine. But it's 5.5 liter, which mm -hmm. I think, what do we say, 335 cubic inches, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a 327, a little bit of yeah. stroke in it, maybe. Right. Yeah, 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 from okay. back in the day with yeah. the C2 version of this car, right? Because to Corvette guys, you always got to talk in cubic inches. <laughs> Leaders, they go, what? what? What are you talking about? Right, they, right. Yeah. Uh, boy, it's just just amazing. It just looks much more aggressive, doesn't it? It does. And the top comes off just like the standard. Right, we retain the same frunk and the same trunk right. as the Stingray, so right. you lose no uh, practicality or drivability in that respect. Same top system, integrated all with this engine. I like this better in the convertible because I like to be able to see the engine. Mm -hmm. um, although you can win the tops up, can't you? Uh, but I, I just like this, and it's lighter too, it's 100 pounds lighter. It is, yeah. yep. And what does this car weigh now, do you know? We have a weight on this model of about 3,400 and oh, that's pretty uh, good, dry it? weight yeah. is what we've been yeah. saying. Well, another example, I think, of American efficiency and engineering are these wheels. These are carbon revolution wheels. And I remember mm -hmm. about a decade ago, they came by with these wheels and they were $20,000 a piece. And you could get them for a Lamborghini or Ferrari. And we put a set on a Porsche and they were lighter. And you could really feel the difference how much you lighter do. they were but they were $20,000 a piece. <laughs> now, these four wheels used to cost what this whole car cost, which is just shows the efficiency of manufacturing. And mm -hmm. it, 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 it's pretty amazing. I think uh, if you're an American car enthusiast, this is something really to be proud of. It's, it really is a tour de force or whatever word you want to use to, to make a car that could outperform almost all the European cars. And it's the only and the most powerful normally aspirated engine that you can get in a form. Everybody a else has twin turbos and things now, right. which a lot of people don't like. It doesn't bother me much, but, uh, and this is the most powerful one you can get. Yeah, yeah, we have the nat most powerful natu naturally aspirated V8 engine now in the world. The previous record holder was a, a Mercedes from about 10 years ago. Yeah. And we've surpassed that by over 50 horsepower with this engine. And I like that Corvette keeps outdoing itself it used to be you, you had to wait a whole generation, mm -hmm. C1, uh, C2, <laughs> and then a long time to C3 and then C4. And the, you know, now, I mean, it just comes boom, boom, boom. Just when people are getting, uh, are still impressed by the C, now this comes along. Mm -hmm. you know, so, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's quite impressive. Tell us about the brakes. These carbon fiber, obviously. Yes, yeah. so this is our Z07 package, right. which has the carbon ceramic brakes, largest ones we've ever fit on any Corvette, even more than the ZR1 from C7. We can take advantage of the mass distribution by having larger rear brakes, and they all pull their weight a little better, so to speak, so it's not just the fronts doing all the work. They are, uh, it's metric. We talk in metric mostly right. in right, right. auto world, but 600 and I'm oh, sorry, 398 millimeters in the front and 391 in the rear. How many piston caliber? It's six in the front and four in the wow. rear. So it's a Z06 with a Z07 package. That's cool. Okay. This is kind of the ultimate expression of this car where the tire, the brakes, the aerodynamics all point more closely to the track experience. So does every Z06 come with a Z07 package? It does not. Oh, I see. I see. It's optional. You, you get the base Z06. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And we worked really hard, Jay, on making sure they both fulfill their mission. This car was a little easier. It's kind of the ultimate expression and everything centered around lap time and driving feel. The Z06, you know, has to be a little more livable daily. Uh, it has a more friendly tire, iron brakes standard. You can gotcha. get the carbons uh, as an option, but 
that car we really wanted to make sure it held the torch just as well as this one. The only difference to su suspension tuning wise is this has 15% stiffer springs. Okay. And steel brakes are way more than adequate for the street. Mm -hmm. they I mean, are. If you're getting these out on the street, you're going to jail. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, very it's pretty, difficult. To... It's pretty crazy. Is there a difference in the rear spoiler tube between the 7 and the... There is. Okay. This is Z07 uh, spec. The Z06 is uh, fascia mounted, more of a traditional looking lip. It's very tasteful, body colored. And it's, it's the 8-speed, right? 8-speed, eight right. Tremec transmission, wow. dual clutch. We've got a shorter final drive but very similar to the And what the is Stingray. the final drive? It's 5.56 to 1, right, so very I short. I remember 411 was crazy. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah wow. to take advantage of this engine, we uh, made it shorter by a significant amount to help get through the gears. Well, let's see, what else can we see? Uh, I guess, let's, do we take a look at the inside? Certainly. Anything different there from the... This car has the level two carbon fiber trim package. Okay. So it's the door panels, the center console panel, right. and then the hockey sticks, we call them up on top of the dash. Right. And then the steering wheel is what I like the most. It's carbon trimmed and then the tap paddles are carbon fiber. Gotcha. And there's just not a ton of buttons on there, which I, which I like. I right. Yeah, we retain most of the same function, similar seat options as the Stingray and uh, the molding is in the center. I love the panel there because in my, when I was a kid, and I have my, my 63 split window, because when I was 13, there was nothing cooler than that. Mm -hmm. And the radio was mounted this way. I, was, oh, I don't know why I thought that the was so Vertical radio, bad. right. And that's what that reminds me of, that panel coming down there. Yeah. Because the button's going this way down the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, yeah. I just like the fact that there's, no, uh, people used to complain, well, the interior of the car, I don't, they always, they always have some excuse why they didn't like it. And all that's gone. I mean, this is more than equal to, I would put this against any European exotic. Mm -hmm. And I imagine it would m more than hold its own. It's, and plus, like you say, you get that quick response. And we're going to drive it in just a minute, so it'll be fun. But yeah, it's, it's very impressive. We can, we'd like to say that this car allows people to that have pined for this type of package to have it now yeah. and not have to sell your house to, to buy it. It's the naturally aspirated V8 that doesn't really exist anymore in a mid-engine. Like yeah. This is on an island of one in some ways and I think we're very anxious for people to experience it. I think the looks send the message of the car and then the driving backs yeah, it up and, completely. And to me, the real thing that makes an exotic car exotic is a bespoke engine, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the other V8 was fine, but you could also get it in a Camaro or a station wagon or whatever you want. <laughs> you know, now it's only in the Corvette. Absolutely. You know, a Corvette engine is truly a Corvette mm -hmm. only engine, which is pretty exciting. I just wondered how they got that past the, quote, the bean counters and everybody. <laughs> What's wrong with the V8? It's fine. I mean, that's what it used to be all the time. Right. You know, I, I've got the, uh, the car I love is that one right there, my C5. To me, that's the first really great modern Corvette mm -hmm. and that thing is I just love that thing it's wonderful to drive right. you know so but I can't imagine having a bespoke engine in there because right. that had to cut corners you had to do with what you had right you know? yeah that LS6 was a derivative of the small block that started C5 right and then the LS7 that was to me almost the first exotic engine we did right this massive seven liter engine that right right that was really high and but then you could get it in the Camaro as well. Right. This one kind of continues that leapfrogs from C6, Z06 to this bespoke engine that sometimes I wonder like, wow, we're really doing this because it really is a uh, like uh, game changer. It's gone to a smaller size that's more efficient mm -hmm. than just making it bigger and bigger right. and bigger, you know, right. going seven, eight liters, you know, it gets a little crazy. Right. But yeah, very impressive. Let's see, anything else we need to see here before we, we go for a spin? Uh, we can talk about the tires. Tires, what, what, what are those Michelin's on there, right? Yeah, yeah, best stuff in the world in my opinion. And we worked at least, I'd say, four years on this tire with Michelin. A are these of, unique to this car? They are. A lot of people don't realize that we develop and spec the tire for this car. Yeah. And it has a, a TPC spec here, we call it. Yeah. Tire product criteria, another GM acronym. 
uh, literally four years of development. I was lucky enough to be part of that with them. So driving at their test track in South Carolina, driving on all the different tracks we take this car to in the world, and they would bring multiple constructions and variations for us to ride and evaluate. The thing I like about Michelin, it sounds silly, it is the most perfectly round tire. It requires the least <laughs> amount of weight when mm -hmm. you balance them. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I put Michelins on almost everything here, and you put them on, if it needs any weight at all, it's always a half an, it's right. not the big- Quarter ounce, you know, right. You know, the big two ounce. Right, yeah, the long yeah, strip. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing how, <laughs> how the tires are perfectly round mm -hmm. and they, they you're not you're not fighting it all the time. Right. Yeah, no, they, they really do a wonderful job. These are the, the Cup 2R version and it's a ZP zero pressure. So it's a run flat which started oh, okay. a Corvette with your C five. Right, right. So we've continued that and have a unique offering there in the market in some ways. And what pressure you run? Thirty two? 35 on these cup tires, okay. so that's a new thing for us. Uh, usually most Corvettes are 30-30 front to rear, but 35 here. And what's the spare, same, 35? Same. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. so same we pack. found it gives a little better wet capability to shrink the tire patch a touch. But then for track sessions, you know, you can lower it down and monitor your tire temperatures and pressures in the car. And this has all the cool features of C8, I imagine, the, the um, the lift that right. my driveway, whatever, as soon as it comes, it'll raise up without having to. Yeah. Exactly. That's the worst thing about some of the European. You have to stop, press the button, <laughs> and wait for it to pump up. <laughs> hey, BB, come on, move your car. I'm right. trying to get my front end up so I don't rip the splitter off. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with this splitter we have on this car, the front lift is a good buy. Yeah. I think it's less yeah. expensive right. than replacing that piece. Well, that was always my favorite thing because on the P1 McLaren. If I if I ruin the front this front splitter, I could either if I cracked it, I either get a new splitter or a Z06 Corvette. <laughs> it, was, it was the same price. Now how can you make a, a whole car the same price? You know it, it always right. made me laugh. But that's what I like. I mean, I, it, it's just so proud that it's an American-made vehicle. It's just the envy of the world. Now, is this a world car? Can this be sold? It is. Yeah. That's yeah. So first hand, time we'll have right-hand drive. The Stingray starts that and we'll continue it with this car. So all the those markets, Australia, Japan, the UK, those folks are very excited about that. And then uh, emissions compliant car in Europe. Well, you know, it's so funny because all the European magazines get a bit snobby with the Corvette, you know. So I was over there, I guess it's almost 20 years ago now, with a C5 Corvette. And we took it down with, on the Autobahn. Everywhere I stopped, people got, um, it was like the rarest Ferrari because they don't mm -hmm. see them there. Right. You used to go vet, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're looking at the kids, can you sit in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it just it just made me laugh how enamored they were of it mm -hmm. because it was a car that they could afford. Even with the taxes, right. it was still cheaper than the home market thing. Right. Plus, there was no limiter. I could run at 171, mm -hmm. 172, and all the German cars were 155. Right, yeah, so the I was just flying by. Gentleman's everybody. agreement. I said, oh, there's no gentleman here, thank you, <laughs> goodbye. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, and we've continued that here. We had the, this car in Germany in August to test on the Nürburgring. Right. And then also a large part of what we do over there is the, Nürb uh, the Autobahn. Right, right. That's almost as valuable where we just yeah. can't find that here legally. Um, so we find the same thing. People really draw their attention to it. And then certainly with the small block, it's unique in how it sounds over there. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't have, they don't have that type of car. Well, I guess, am I the first person to drive it? Is that right? You will be the first time person oh, to drive this. Well, let's, uh, let's take it for a spin and see what she does. Can't cool. Wait. How cool is that? <laughs> okay, we're about to start it up. If you're wondering why we're wearing masks, it's because, well, that's all the corporate America now, is that we're in a closed vehicle, the windows are up, and they want masks on, so, hey. Do I have a Corvette? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Let's see what she does. Oh, that's, that sounds very impressive. <laughs> Beautiful raising. Wow. We spent a lot of time working on that sound. One of my complaints about the Camaro was my elbow would always yeah. be up here. Whereas this, you've got a full window you can see. You don't feel like a child looking right. out, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds good. I mean, 
Yeah. Different for a Corvette, obviously. You know, embrace this engine, right? Let's make it sound different. And exactly. It's not that's so funny how you, you can't sell something before it's time. I remember when the first generation and the, uh, the ZR1 came out with that. Was it Mercury Marine? Marine, yep. Yeah. You know, and I thought, oh, this is going to be the ultimate, but it didn't look different enough. Right. And people thought, well, uh, why do I want to spend 30 on right. the car? It looks just like the other one, you know? Uh, I thought it was a great engine and 375 horsepower, very European. Mm -hmm. But we Americans, we like our horsepower. It's, you know, it, it takes a while <laughs> to get people to. I love the fact that you have just a bespoke motor. That, mm -hmm. that, that's that's the most impressive thing. That I agree. It's only available in a Corvette. Thank you. Goodbye. Right. <laughs> yeah, and it it'll time will tell. But it feels like this might be, you know, the record holder for naturally aspirated V8 power. Right. Right. I don't see anyone else doing this. You know. No. No. The world's changed since we kind of put this on the drawing board. A lot more focus on the electric things and right. smaller turbo engines. And this might be the, one of the last truly analog cars without yep. hybrid assist. Or yep. Well, I mean, it just pulls so hard, <laughs> doesn't it? Does it? And you know, in the old days, you'd be sidestepping mm -hmm. and going. You just put your foot in it and you go. Right. I mean, it's exactly. Yeah, we've uh, announced zero to sixty is two point six seconds on this package. Boy, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Which yeah. with yeah. two wheel drive and yeah, no. Well, I love that it's two wheel drive. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that NSX I have is very nice, but it's four wheel drive, and I go, why do I need? Why do I need the extra complexity? Why mm -hmm. do I need the extra weight? Right. I mean, I like the fact that I want to step out a little bit with mm -hmm. it. I can, you know. Yeah. We're kind of venturing into like physics limiting territory where it's yeah. two wheel drive, no boost on right. us. 2.6 is pretty stout. With our proving ground in Yuma now, we come this way for some good roads. Where's, More like San that? Diego. Proving grounds in Yuma now. Oh, oh Yuma, yeah, yeah. Mesa yeah. to Yuma. It's much smaller now. But we'll go like the Anza Borrego area of San Diego, some great roads there. I mean, the quality is what's most evident. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is one of our pre-production builds from Bowling Green. And, um, you know, we have stages of manufacturing where right. they're not gonna, going to be sold to the public, but this car looks like it could be right, tomorrow, right? Right. right. But that whole, so the engine I should have mentioned is built by hand in the Performance Build Center, which is adjacent to the Bowling Green Assembly. And there's, I think, 10 or 12 builders. Okay, now so. does, does, does each builder build one engine or do they all work together? Each builder builds one. Do they sign it like they do? In, oh, that's we great. Did. Yeah, there's a plaque on the top of the intake manifold. Well, that's pretty cool. So you can, you can contact the guy that built your car. Yeah, yep. And then we're bringing back the program where you can build your own as well. Wow. For a small fee. Well, that's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. So you could yeah. have your own. Well, that's what something like, the, you know, to me, it's like, yeah. it's like a watch. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need all the, but why do you buy a mechanical watch? From, because you like the mechanicalness of right. it. You like the way it works. And it's the same thing with a car. I mean, Really, all you need to get is point A to point B. A <laughs> bolt would do it just fine. <laughs> right. But you want to have some individuality. You want to. Yep. Have, let's see if we can catch up with that guy in the Corvette. All right. No, it's life change. Show him his boss. Yeah. Well, at least it's show him there's a new, new Corvette. Yeah. Now. Let's yeah. See. You know, maybe it's psychological, but I as composed of my C7. I feel it turning from the center as opposed to the front, you know what I mean? Yep. You, 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 it, it's more, it, yeah. Very astute, yep. That's what we all say. It feels like the anchor point is right. well behind you and you're pivoting. That's one of the best things of the uh, mid-engine car, I think. I wonder where our guy went. Yeah, I don't know, he pulled off. 
Well, GML has been the leader in heating and air conditioning. I mean, it's something American cars have always had over any European car. Mm -hmm. You know, when I bought my F1 McLaren, they said, uh, it comes with air conditioning, mm -hmm. but if you want good air conditioning, <laughs> it's an extra $25,000. Oh my gosh. And I said, well, what's in there? Well, they put more vents and then, you okay. know. And I go, well, really? I mean, it just made me laugh. Just the fact that you would settle for cr crappy air. Now, if you want the good air conditioning. <laughs> right. you know, That'll cost you. Yeah, you want the regular steak or the delicious steak. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have the delicious steak. <laughs> and there is a rock steady. Even at high RPM, you don't see anything there. We like at high RPM, when you lift out of the throttle, it does a little burble. And it's real, it's not a noise, it's pumped in through the speakers, you know, right. all that kind of nonsense. Yeah, this is a very impressive machine. This is Thank you. Yeah, structurally very sound. These roads show, and we're in sport mode, so the dampers are a little stiffer than they might be otherwise. I just like the fact that they let you engineers do what it is you do. Yeah. Because, you know, everything prior to this, I mean, I'm talking 20 years ago, was always a compromise. Well, what can you do with what we have? Mm -hmm. What parts do we have that you can utilize? You mm -hmm. know? One thing you find interesting today is the engine itself. We talked about being right. hand-built. There's uh, essentially, an, it's a net-built engine where individual shims are chosen for the camshaft right. spacing. Right. It's a mechanical valve train, so a true, you know, hard-mounted system. So I don't know how many shims there are, 40 or something shims, to get the right tolerance so right. all the clearances are right and it's, you know, adjust for life. You don't have to get in there and tinker with and it. Tell us the difference between a flat plane crank and a regular crank. So flat plane crankshaft is, uh, if you laid it on a table, it's just one plane, 180 degrees right. of counterweights opposing each other. And a cross plane crankshaft has every 90 degrees, right. you know, like a clover looking, four leaf clover on an end view versus a flat view. And so that uh, reduces the amount of inertia in the engine and allows it to spin to this 8600 RPM redline. Right. It's kind of, and that's something we really highlighted in this car in development was, okay, we've got this really low inertia engine. I always think of uh, growing up near mid-Ohio when the Indy cars were there, right. and they would rev their engines warming up, and it would be just wham, 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 wham. Well, let's hear, we what, that. Let's hear what it sounds like. jail now <laughs> in a prototype car <laughs> I mean it really is fantastic it is yeah it shines on these kind of roads a little twisty mountainous type stuff I mean I would say you'd have to pay over 300,000 to get equal performance in a European car mm -hmm. I love the fact that it's constantly evolving I mean I see the growth and the change just since the C8, which seems like it came out yesterday, but it's been mm -hmm. a, a year and a half, and two years old. Right. You know, and yet you're already, we're not resting on our laurels here. We're right. Not, oh, we can make that for a few more years. The demand is there. Mm -hmm. It's always improving, always improving, always making it better. That's, the guy that gets a C8, oh, he's going to want this. His next one's going to be this. Mm -hmm. you know? Redline 7000 with James Conn <laughs> from it was like from the late 60s, early 70s, and you see the tack that da, 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 and then that's 68, 69, and then 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 you know it's like it's the end of the world, you know, <laughs> hilarious. Right. I mean, this feels like a free breathing, totally unrestricted engine, right. but obviously it meets all smog and all requirements. All Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Mission compliant. Here and in Europe, where it's even more stringent. Yeah, that's right. It meets all European specifications, mm -hmm. doesn't it? It will. But yeah, very responsive, right? There's no lag in the power, and it reminds me of uh, the LS7, where it has this crescendo as you build RPM. Well, 
well, you know, I'm a union guy, and I love the fact you build a vehicle like this in a union shop, pay a union wage, make a profit, and still make an exemplary vehicle, mm -hmm. you know, that just blows away the competition. It's pretty impressive. Obviously, this is not a full-on road test. It's just a test drive. You know, they were kind enough to let me be the first person outside the empty driver, which is a huge honor. And, uh, you know, it is a prototype vehicle. So it's almost production ready, correct? It is. Yeah, yeah. This is one of the it, last stages. It's a, it's a, there you go. <laughs> it certainly feels like it. Yeah, on behalf of our team, Jay, we're very glad that you're the first one oh, well, thank you. outside thank you. of GM to drive this. Well, thank you. It's, it really is a huge honor, and it just it just makes you proud. You know, I would always cringe when they, they put some of the American cars against the European stuff, and those days are gone forever because mm -hmm. this thing, you know, and at the price they sell it for. I was one of those people who thought the C7 would continue to be 80 grand. The C8 would be 140 right. or 180, right. you know, and, the, and and they just blew everybody away with, with that amazing, uh, amazing 60 something thousand dollars. So yep. congratulations, you guys. Thanks so much for letting me be the first to drive this. My pleasure. How cool is that? Mm-hmm. <laughs>